What's up everyone? It's been a bit since my last whole home audio video and I've got a treat for you. Since my channel's inception, it's grown to become a valuable resource in the whole home audio space, offering demonstration videos, a fully documented installation series completely from start to finish, tips and tricks and answering your guys' questions along the way. But it's 2025, some new products have come out. It's time to review the state of the market and what products I think are still the leaders, do some comparisons, and we're gonna unveil this whole home audio amplifier that's just hit the market. I'm gonna be putting out some more content, so if you're interested, stick around. I also have a special discount for my viewers, so be sure to check that out in the description. If you don't wanna to listen to my whole video, please check the video marker tags and skip to any part of the video that might interest you. I've gone ahead and segmented it off, so that way you can do this and don't have to complain that the video is too long. It's got so much information though, I hope you stick around. and. I'll probably end up editing it anyway and realize that I left out some information. So check that out if you don't want to listen to me. If you follow along my channel, you know that the two, or I suppose you could call it three main products that I've been involved with installing and have really promoted because I, I think they're a great product. And you know, I've really, in the DIY community, I really try to find products and promote good products that are affordable for all. You know that I've, mostly cover the Monoprice 6 Zone, no logo, whole home audio amp, the Soundava WS66i, and then I suppose you could toss in the Dayton Audio DAX66. The Monoprice 6 Zone and the DAX66, they're essentially the exact same thing. A few minor cosmetic differences, but, but they're pretty much the same. You can check out my prior videos of those detailing the differences. But the WS66i, that was the first upgraded unit built by Soundava, which was developed years later after the Monoprice and Dayton units. And this upgraded version, which I've covered extensively on my channel, it offered two built-in wireless streamers, built-in mobile app control, and a better warranty. Now, over the past few years, since my prior videos, there really hasn't been a ton of new whole home audio products that have hit the market until now. This new amplifier I present to you is the AmpliPro. What if I told you that you can continually upgrade the software that's running on this? that you can add and upgrade new features as they come out. Uh, what if I said that the source code for this and the hardware schematics, so not only the source code running the software in here, but the hardware schematics were all open source and that you could contribute to it or make uh, you know your own flavor of your own. What if I told you that you could keep your existing Monoprice keypads and get it to work with this system? What if I said this was the most expansive, not expensive, but expansive, whole home audio system on the market with a total capacity of 36 individual zones with two speakers in each zone. Well, it's not a dream, this is it. And this is the Ampla Pro built by Micronova here in the United States. It's not a dream, this is the amplifier and there's way more to it than just the few features that I've already mentioned. So let's get looking into this amp engineered and manufactured right here in the United States. While this amplifier may be new to the market, it's certainly no stranger. The hardware and software to this amp has been a work in progress for around 10 years. Something that started out as a few engineer side project and has finally become a mainstream amp. The AmpliPro amp is running the open source software called AmpliPi, which is also created by the same team. And I was lucky enough to have a few series of calls with the founder and a few members of the team to understand this product, the journey that it's had. So the founder of the Ample Pro product, he was looking for, he's an electrical engineer, and he was looking for a whole home audio solution around 10 years ago. And being the electrical engineer that he is, just like I'm the software engineer, and you know, sometimes I'll build things when I know that I could buy them or find some other alternative. We like to build things. He said, why buy something when you have the skills to build one yourself? So not only that, but he was tired of the mentality where you buy something, five years later or less, it's either out of date or broken. So he had a larger vision in mind, being the first company in this space to offer a fully open source product, one that could have the ability to be upgraded in both the hardware and the software space. In today's day and age, open sourcing the entire system like that is really just not too heard of. If we look at the back of the amplifier, you'll notice that there's a section of the amp which has a plate screwed on it. The thought behind this was that as they developed add-ons or upgrades over the years, that they will offer a new backplate, similar to if you've ever built your own uh, desktop computer. 
when you purchase a motherboard for your computer, it comes with the back metal plate, which goes on over your computer, on your computer case, the back of it. And if you ever get a new motherboard, you simply swap out that back plate and it'll work with your existing computer case. So that's the same idea here too. Now, earlier I mentioned being able to use your existing monoprice keypads because I know a ton of people, a ton of you out there have that system already, um, or the DAX66 or the WS66i. They're probably the biggest shareholder, I would think, between all of those, if you lump all three of those that I just mentioned together, probably, I would imagine, one of the, the biggest shareholders in the whole home audio market. Ample Pro and the Micronova team is currently developing an add-on module for the Ample Pro, which will allow those keypads to continue working, allowing this amplifier to be a drop-in replacement for your system, whether your other amplifier breaks or you're looking to upgrade your system, that would allow this to be a drop-in replacement, which I think is, is huge. Um, I think that unlocks the door for the AmpliPro system tenfold. So for me personally, my house, we, we wired it for that monoprice, uh, the WS66i system. And I have no problem with those keypads. I like the keypads. I've been using them for eight years and I like them. I, I don't really want to have to swap them out if I don't want to, as I would imagine most of you would not want to either. So to my surprise, they said that they would build an add-on module to get that to work. So that's that's huge. The AmpliPro team means business. The minute they told me that this about this, I knew that I had to get one of these and, and start reviewing this and swap this out in my system and, and start playing with it and show you guys. I have a feeling that this particular module could be the key that transitions you guys to possibly get this amplifier as well. So that's why I wanted to show this. So let's talk about the AmpliPro Touch keypad. Now they have their own version. If you don't want to, you know, maybe you don't own the three systems that I mentioned prior. So maybe you're looking at getting this to start out your home. You don't have to use the keypads either. Let's just put that out there. You can use the mobile app. You don't have to use the keypads, but I personally like the keypads. I think it makes it more friendly for others to use as well. You can use the Ample Pro and they have an LCD touch keypad that they are about ready to release a new upgraded version. And it will be controlled over ethernet as well. So that means that you can drop that in. If you already have your house wired, you can drop that in. And it's gonna be power over ethernet power. So you don't have to run any extra power wires to it. So that's great as well. So they're power over ethernet, which is handy because most modern whole home audio systems are using ethernet cables now anyway for their volume controls. That's what most are doing. If you don't, you can just run them. It's pretty cheap. What I'm trying to say is that this system is following the unofficial standards that most whole home audio systems are doing now. So you can use their keypads if, if you like theirs better, or you can continue using the Monoprice Dayton Audio WS6 side keypads or no keypads. Stay tuned. I'm going to do some more detailed reviews and show you guys those as well as when they are finished developing that module. That's going to be a huge video. I will be doing a review on that module when I get it installed on my system and test the keypads. So let's talk about the zone capacity. I mentioned that this system was the most expansive system that I've ever come across because this system can be expanded up to 36 zones. The architecture of this system is similar to how others work. You have one main master unit that you purchase and then you buy the expander expansion units, which are a little cheaper because it doesn't require all of the brains that the master needs. And then you stack them and you use the ribbon cable on the back to cascade them to uh, you know the output of one to the input of the other. So you're chaining them together. So that concept, that's not new. And AmpliPro has adopted that same standard as well. So you can see that we have theme here. Most of these popular amplifiers companies, there's a, a methodology and a system that works and AmpliPro has adopted that same thing as well. So. Most of the other counterparts, like I mentioned, the, the Monoprice, the Dayton Audio, they're good up to 18 zones, so you can have three total. This one here, you can get up to 36, so I've never seen that before. The AmpliPro system has a built-in REST API, which is what their app uses, as well as their Home Assistant integration. So yes, you heard that right. If you use Home Assistant, they actively build and maintain and support their Home Assistant automation platform integration, which ironically, or maybe not ironically, is also open source, the Home Assistant platform. And so that's one of the most widely used free home automation platforms in the world. 
the Monoprice, GAX66, and the WS6SI have somewhat of an integration of integration documents, but it's using serial commands. That's how I built the mobile app for the Monoprice system and the Dayton Audio system that had kind of gotten pretty popular because there was no mobile app at the time when I had built that. The serial commands are not very fun to work with. So while the AmpliPro features a fully documented and open REST-based API, it's actually modern. That's what modern apps are built on and, and websites is with REST APIs. So let's get to the important question that I know you are all asking. Let's talk about pricing. So with my coupon code, which is TKMZ, which is also the same for the WS66i system and the AmpliPro system as well. So you can use that code on either one if you're on the fence. So with my coupon code TKMZ, that makes the AmpliPro come out to be a little bit more expensive. It's around $600 more expensive than the WS66i if we're comparing those. But with the AmpliPro, there are differences. So, I mean, this is a US, you know, manufactured and built piece of hardware with future updates, not only in software, but possibly hardware as well, meaning that the sky is the limit on this amplifier, it can be. The amplifier was built to be tinkered with, especially since they provided open source hardware and schematics. So if something goes wrong with this amplifier, you'll be able to get it fixed. I cannot tell you the countless number of emails from people that I've received, YouTube comments who have purchased the mono price unit and it ended up having some sort of hardware go out inside of it right after the one year warranty. And of course there's no schematic, so they're saying, how can I fix this and what, what can we do? Uh, it definitely happens. There's no warning when and why it happens. It, it definitely happens. So let's talk about some of the differences in this amplifier, what you'll get for that $600 price difference. So there's high quality, very high quality Class D amplifiers inside of this with a very high quality 32-bit, 384 kilohertz digital analog converter. So this amplifier actually has the ability to hook up to a record player and get uncompressed record sound in multiple zones, which currently nobody else has an offering to do this. So that's unique to this amp, getting that uncompressed record sound through multiple zones. But I know obviously some of you may not care about that either, so take that for what you will, but that is something that this amplifier offers that no other amp does offer. You have the ability to stream from URLs to get local radio. As an example, if your local radio station streams on a URL, this amplifier you can stream from URL-based services and it does not take up any physical inputs. You can use web-based controls and not just app controls. So if there is actually a web browser interface built into this system. So you can do that as well if you're sitting in your computer. There are the preamp outputs, the line level outputs in each zone, similar to the other systems as well. So that allows you to hook up subwoofers, another amplifier that's powering hundreds of speakers. So those line level outputs are there as well as the other systems. This system is also upgradable. Like I said, a new module comes out, maybe support for something else. It's upgradable. It's also upgradable. That was the hardware I was talking about. It's also upgradable in the software. Let's just say there's a bug in the app. This amplifier is unique in the sense that the web view that we were, I was just talking about that is what's running on your mobile app. So the mobile app actually connects to the amplifier and is running the web version of it in your app. And so if there's a problem with the app, maybe you found a bug, which I did find a bug and I was able to contribute to it since it's open source and we were able to get that fixed relatively quickly. If there's a bug, you all you have to do is you log in to the amplifier and it checks to see if there's an update available and it will download that update and apply it to the system and restart. So it's a little bit more of a modernized system following standard updates procedures. So updates, which I would imagine would also fix if there's a hardware issue in here, maybe with something with a streamer or something, then I would imagine it also fixes that as well. So this is upgradable in hardware and software. If you are looking for the cheapest Holom audio amp on the market, then this video is not for you. The cheapest is Monoprice. I think it probably always will be. Just stick to that and don't complain about the pricing of this or the DAX66 or the DAX88, WS66i, it doesn't matter. The cheapest will probably always be Monoprice.
but in many senses, you get what you pay for. So I don't think you'll get anything remotely close to that price point. If you're looking for something better than that monoprice unit, you're starting to creep into the WS66i and now the Ample Pro unit, both of which I have codes for discounts. So, you know, save you guys a couple hundred bucks and buy something else. How would you want to choose between the Ample Pro and the WS66i? Then let's talk about some of those points. So how many zones do you need? The WS66i can max out at 18 zones and six sources, while the Ample Pro we just talked about can expand up to 36 zones and four sources, but more technically because of the fact that the URLs, if you have URL streaming sources, those don't take up an input. That's one thing. Do you want to be able to upgrade or repair the hardware, the software on your own? Then you, you may pick AmpliPro. Do you need home assistant integration? You probably should go with AmpliPro or if you need the REST API. If you don't know what that is, then you don't need to worry about that. But if you want that integration, then the REST API, such as home assistant and other custom integrations, it would be way easier to use this than the serial interface on the other competing amps. So those are just a few of the differences. So in summary, this is the unveiling of the Ampla Pro on my channel. I'm looking forward to sliding this in. I have this video is just talking about this amplifier. I'm going to be doing more videos in the coming days and weeks where I swap this out with my WS66i and we listen to it and play around with it. So yeah, look forward to those videos. So feel free to leave your comments and questions. I love to respond. I try to interact with all of my comments. I love talking to my audience. So hope you guys look forward to any of my upcoming videos on this amp, such as showing the replacement of the Monoprice WS6SI DAX66, any of those amps. So talking about the replacement, going over the new module when it comes out to be able to use the existing keypads, going over the new Ampla Pro touch keypad, their LCD keypad, which is close to its debuts and so much more. So hope you guys stick around and I appreciate you guys watching until the end. Thanks.